Hi, everyone. Welcome to our weekly book study. You are the happiness you seek. My name is Bill Free. If you aren't, don't already know that, thank you for being here. Let me see if my YouTube turns on the volume. Okay, it's, Hi, there we go. Turn that off. And welcome, everyone, to week three, chapter three of You Are the Happiness You Seek. If you're in uh, the UK, I hope you got your book. I think they had a new batch uh, available. Oh, okay. Susan's got hers. And uh, we're in for a treat today. Harley Dembert is, uh, he has a, a great background. And uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of his bio before I bring him on. And uh, Harley, this is his first time being a co-host, and he wrote to me months ago, I'm kind of loose on, uh, you know, once I get the lineup and the schedule, I don't, uh, I don't really talk to the co-host too much until like 15 minutes before we get started. So they're, they're all a little bit like, uh, <laughs> how does this work? And I'm happy to, to, to say that Harley, he's going to be a treat for all of us because he's an instructor at the School of Practical Philosophy in New York. And uh, he, he's teaching a class right now on happiness. <laughs> so uh, this is like a perfect uh, uh, book study and, and uh, part of uh, uh, it's something that he can get his teeth into. But more than that, the school that he teaches is a sister school to the school that Rupert went uh, to and is part of for 20 years. And in the green room, Harley was saying that that he doesn't know how Rupert has the time for it. But sometimes he ac actually uh, teaches in this same school that Harley is an instructor for and Harley. Thank you for being here. We look forward to uh, being having you part of this book study. I look forward to looking at this chapter with you. And for you all that uh, that are watching, you're you're going to get a kick out of this. Harley said, even though this chapter is only four pages, he said, "Oh man, we could spend ten weeks on this chapter." <laughs> I'm going, what? <laughs> So welcome, Harley. Thank you for being here. Thank you. It's, it's, a, pleasure, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I just wanted to, ju to, just, uh, say to just say quickly that the, Rupert is still affiliated with the Study Society. That's where he gives, uh, that he gives lectures every now and then. Uh, but the School of Practical Philosophy, he doesn't get involved with. Uh, and I think, honestly, it could be because, uh, uh, well, I don't want to say the egos of the school leaders, but they kind of split about uh, 40 years ago or 50 years ago. And, but they both have the same lineage, uh, which, which comes from the, uh, actually the East, uh, from Shankara, who was around in the ninth century. And the successor to that, his name is Shantananda Saraswati. Um, but it's an Eastern lineage. And we both, uh, the School of Practical Philosophy follows the differences that the school that I'm involved with follows the philosophy from the East and, and uh, but also from the West through Plato. Uh, but, the, but because we don't, that's, that's pretty much where I just think I should just kind of leave it at that. Uh, um, but I just want to say it's a pleasure to be here. I have an academic background in philosophy, but what I discovered through the School of Practical Philosophy and certainly through Rupert Spira is that uh, this is all about how to, this is practical, how to apply philosophy in everyday life, where if it's theoretical and you don't use it, scrap it. So that's, <laughs> that's really, and I, I find that that's where the practical aspect of it comes. And the one thing I just want to say about Rupert Spear and how fortunate it is that I, that I stumbled upon him is I just think that we're so blessed to me. The greatest philosopher in the West is Ralph Waldo Emerson. And I feel like Rupert Spear is the Emerson of today, and that he has a facility of just channeling what comes from, um, well, I don't want to say God, because that's all sorts of different combinations of, of connotations, but perhaps what I would call the absolute, where we don't know what it is, but it just comes through him. To me, that's the mark of intelligence. So I would say he's 
on that level, the most intelligent person who I have yet to meet, except for on Zoom, that I've come across with a way that he just responds. He doesn't think about things. It just comes through him. Very much in the same way that perhaps Mozart, our greatest composer, wrote music. Nice, nice. Well, I'm happy to hear that. And I, I'm, I'm happy to hear, Harley, that, the, the, that someone of, uh, at your academic level yes. uh, s- sees that and is able to share it with us because, you know, I, I, I'm not uh, academic and, uh, and I, but, but I, I recognize those that are, uh, are coming from that same ilk, that same level of, of clarity. And, and, and there's a seeing that verifies. So thank you for that, uh, that verification. And I, I love Emerson. We've traveled uh, to, uh, to uh, Boston, near Boston. It's near Harvard and yeah, uh, and, and not far from here, actually. And uh, Emerson is, you know, he's he was a game changer for for America, for the world, really. And uh, and his uh, his uh, understanding and insight uh, really revolutionized. Uh, f- philosophy and and also opened our uh, it, op- it opened a door for for a lot of things to come in that were that were kept secret or seeming like they were secret. Yes, yeah, and they were in fact uh, called the transcendentalists back then. It was it was yes. You've got you've got uh, Henry David Thoreau. Yes, got, uh, and and uh, you have Walt Whitman. Uh, yeah, uh, all part of that group. Uh, yeah. So exactly. Uh, yes. So well, thank you for that reference. And let's get started with chapter three. Are you myself? Are you myself? This sounds a little bit, I mean, and I, I, I'm not going to go ahead, but I, I, I love the reference to the book that Rupert speaks about in the very last part of this chapter. Are you myself? What would you share with us on this first page Harley, that uh, that would be a highlight. Ah, uh, well, I could talk for a while and just are you myself? I mean, are we referring to the small self with a small s or a capital S, the universal self, just for starters? But to go on to that, I've got to tell you. Well, wait, wait, wait. Go yeah. back, because because we're definitely going to answer that question. We we are talking about the universal self. Yes, it's a capital S. That's yeah. correct. Yeah, that's correct. But the thing I was particularly blown away by, I mean, it just brought shivers down my spine, was that it started off where uh, I I don't believe there are any accidents. And the fact that this started with a quote from Herman Hesse um, blew me out of the water because it was Herman Hesse at the age of 15 for me, his book, The Glass Bead Game, Magister Ludi, that brought me into this path of, 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 looking at, the, at, at, uh, at spirituality. I was not that way until I read that book. And here's a quote right out of there. Home is neither here nor there. Home is within you or home is nowhere at all. I love that last quote, home is nowhere at all. Because the other two, within you, here nor there, brings up a concept of duality. And that's just blown away by this Herman Hesse quote. So... It's a nice way to start for me. And I thought, I am at home. Speaking of home, this is home for me. Yes. There's always a little bit of trepidation when I don't, first of all, the first time we met, I don't know any of you, and there's a lot of people on here, but I feel very comfortable. That to me was just the kind of like the guideline with that. And and home is nowhere at all. It's just the concept of nowhere. If you break it down, there isn't a particular place. It goes beyond anything that we can conceive. <laughs> yes. Nowhere. Yes, yes. I love, I love that. If you split yeah, it, you good one. Yes. Well, uh, Harley, how would you describe uh, with the the use of the uh, word within? I would say that uh, within is it sets up, it sets up that it's it's basically that it's something that's with you all the time, and there's there's a. Uh, I don't want to do a spoiler alert, but there's towards the end, there's a whole conversation about that, about well, what is within and where is within. Um, 
because it tries to approximate a, a point. And actually, one of the things that I discovered in the last week about meditation is that oftentimes we think of meditation as something that goes from perhaps moves upward to the mind and calms the mind down, but it actually, the mind, it transcends. So you go within down to actually behind the navel. If we were to say there was a certain approximation of a place, that's but, what but I- But it's see. not, isn't that really giving an impression that the body mind is, uh, is, is a part of that? Yeah, it's a part of that. It is, yeah. it is, it is a part of that. And you almost get a, a perhaps a, a visceral feel of it going deep within you. But I see that all as transcendent. So, you know, we have to be careful with the English language because, uh, which is one of the reasons why I, I, I mentioned to Bill that um, I, 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 love, I love the Sanskrit language. And I think that Rupert must have a little bit of a background in that too, because it's a, it's a spiritual language. And the, the problem with the English language is that there are limitations to uh, those words. Um, well, word in a private conversation with Rupert, Rupert has advised that uh, not to get people lost in Sanskrit. <laughs> no, definitely not. I've gotten yeah. lost in Sanskrit. So yeah. I'm very careful about that, as I mentioned to you. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But there are easier ways to describe it because the word in English within, you know, you think of it just going, um, it gives a kind of a uh, temporal or a body kind of a so sound to it. But I hope I just explained to you that, yes, there are parts of the body's body where you do feel that kind of transcendence within. Yeah. It's not, well, it, this is about getting, it's about transcending the mind. In, in my, the way I try to help people to have the experience of within is I like to exchange that word for awareness. Because I, because what it what within typically does, especially if someone points to the body like you do, uh, or like you did, it, it makes people think that within is here, and and it, it it totally loses the the element of of the of the true meaning of within. Yes, it does. It does, but. Bill, wouldn't you wouldn't you agree that a lot of the times that were what what it does is within means that the center of awareness oftentimes we could actually locate within the body in our mind in our heads you know the area between here and it's actually it's actually stating and you can you, you don't have to necessarily agree with this but there when it when it goes within the body and goes down below to to that part of your body, um, outside of the mind, you feel the transcendence. You feel the withinness. Hmm. I mean, it's something to consider. Not yeah. necessarily have to agree with it, but that's we'll have to it. have a further conversation on this. Yeah, we haven't even gotten started yet. <laughs> Let's keep going. Yes. Uh, so, you want to read the question? Yes. If the presence of awareness is the primary fact of experience. Why are most of us not in touch with it? With it, And I love the answer is that we become identified with the content of our experience. As a philosopher, the way that I see it is that there are three primary questions. What is this world? Who am I? Actually, what am I? Which is, which is to, to, to paraphrase what, what Rupert constantly states. And then what is my relationship to it? We are always told I believe that it's all about the content of our experiences. We're, we're caught up in the sensory world. The senses are certainly alluring. Um, Plato's even talked about it, that, um, that you have the raging senses around us and the creation is very compelling. So that's why we're not in touch with our own awareness. And sad to say, but I think that we're encouraged by our society not to be aware of that, but to be aware of what's around us, what connects with the senses. So, um, and then of course, once we, I, I believe that when we were born, we didn't necessarily have that, but we're always constantly identifying things. We do it as, as I mean, I do it myself as a parent or a child, we're identifying with objects. And so that's what happens. Yeah.
It's the world. I, I like the I like what he says in uh, in the third paragraph where he starts with likewise. If someone were to ask us to describe our current experience in general, almost all of us would list our thoughts, images, memories, feelings, sensations of the body, perceptions of the world, activities, relationships, and so on. Very few of us would mention the presence of awareness. Right. And, and even with this clear understanding, we still wouldn't because people would go, what are you talking about? Yeah. You can't even describe it. That's it, it, it's it's so true. That's the whole thing because it's the indescribable. Yet it's the yeah, it's the objects. You know, if you take something like the sun, um, which is you know consider consider that from an empirical standpoint. You've got the sun, but what you see is the light is is the objects around you that are illuminated, and that's what you experience. And you yes. just see that as to be. Yeah, I think he he uh, does get into that. moves to that in a page or two later. Well, actually, the next paragraph. Okay. He, he um, the fact yeah, of being, yeah, yeah. excuse me? Yes, yes, yes. I, I, it's, you're right. Yes, yes. Right, exactly. It cannot be seen. You can't, in other words, you can't see the light from the sun, but you can see how it reflects against the objects. So that's yeah. what we see. Yeah. And uh, how do you talk about the inexplic explic inexplicable? I mean, that, you know, you take something like, uh, I mean, Buddhists, from what I know about it, they don't even want to get into a description of what, what that is. Um, you, just, you just talk about um, do no suffering, do no harm. So, right. We can only really experience it. The, the, the idea that is presented in the, the next paragraph, the fact of being aware is the most obvious intimate and familiar element of experience and yet it has no objective uh, ob objective features and this is you know for 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 me this is what is the game changer of the the content or or the the idea and the essence of of truth that rupert presents brings it so clearly to uh, to what I am, to to what you am, which is the same am. Yes, it's, and and it's the, then there's not two ams. <laughs> no, no, but that's the that's the deception that we see. We this is where the senses deceive us. We're looking at all. I'm looking at all these. Well, I can only see so many people. Maybe thirty people right now. All these seemingly different bodies but the thing is is that if there was if there were two ams how would we ever connect how could we even have a conversation there's only one am it's that that's where the connection is that's it's, where it's, the that understanding is where freedom lies too yes because then you can understand why the, how a book like a course in miracles and other traditions can say there's only one of us <laughs> because that statement, there's only there's only one oneness. There's only uh, and, and even the use of the word God. There's only the essence of of God. There's right. only the essence of I am. Right, and it all comes from unity. We actually have we had a practice actually in uh, the intro course and, at our school where when we when we try to come give the concept of unity, we take an apple. And we cut it in two. So you see, all of a sudden now you see two pieces, but really it's still one, right? It's, it's two. And, and so you just keep on dividing it and dividing it. And they're never all these different seemingly disparate pieces. It's just all broken up, right? I mean, yes. we talk about the Big Bang Theory even how everything just came from one cell. Or look yeah. at us. We all came from one cell, a zygote, yet there's all these different cells. So you can see that it's true. Yeah. It's true. This yes. seemingly difference is an illusion. Yes. And we give yes. it name and we give it a form as a result of that name is separate. And yep. that's the huge, huge error. And I think that's the root of all problems. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, let's keep going. The overlooking Absolutely. of our true nature. What would you say about that before we turn the page? 
Well, that's that's I, I think I just I think I just explained that the overlooking of our true nature. We, we spend we spend our whole entire time overlooking what is what we truly are. Are you myself? Myself? It's not it's not seen there. You know, there's the, and, and there's the story of, uh, of 10, 10 men who tried to cross a river and they um, they cut they go they go to the other side of the river and they count how many people are there. So they go, you know, they go through it and they only count nine. And why do they only count nine? Because they each forget to count themselves, their true self. <laughs> so they're always crying all the time. Well, that's, I know it's a, it might sound like a silly parable, but that's our life. Yes, yeah. I mean, that, 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 that's really what it comes down to. So uh, if we go to the top of page 22, Harley. Yes. Uh, what 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 stands out on, uh, or just page twenty two in general? What stands out for you on this page? Well, it goes back to, um, I mean, they're all they're all pretty incredible, but but where it really starts to stand out, I believe that we covered the first two. I believe that we discovered we we covered the first paragraph already. So I'd rather go to consider the amount of knowledge and experience that each of us acquired during our education. I just love, absolutely love how he talks about education. And certainly my education was that, have our parents or teachers ever asked us, what is it that knows or is aware of that knowledge and experience? And I've yet to meet anyone who answers just to that question. We are never asked that. It's always just fill you, fill you with information. And, um, there was uh, of the uh, of the tradition of Rupert. There was uh, uh, a person in the early 20th century by the name of Vivian Kananda who brought the East to the West, and he was asked at one point because he was he had the self awareness where he read the Encyclopedia Britannica a few pages and was just so present that he was able to absorb everything from that because he was asked constantly asked that kind of question of awareness and in that way was present and not just filled with information. It's, 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 a, it's a sad commentary on, on the way that our education is, wouldn't you say? Well, I, I'd say we're evolving. Uh, and totally. I'm, I'm, I'm curious, what, what would you, do you think we'll, we'll ever have, uh, I mean, if I was raising kids today, <laughs> they'd be raised different than they were yeah by this, this uh, what Bill did, you know, 40 years ago, I have a 45 year old and, and grown other small, uh, younger, uh, grown children. And, and I'm curious if, if parents today that have this understanding, if they would pose these kinds of questions to their children. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because that, that would give, that would give such a, head start for for children to experience themselves and the world right right well let me ask you this let's let's flip it the other way what if the kids asked did that to their parents because bill i can honestly remember when i was four or five years old and maybe you can too and i would love to i wish i could see a thumbs up from the group but I recall being four years old and looking up at the sky and having these great philosophical questions that got that just got layered over with stuff with knowledge. But wouldn't you say you as a, as a if you could just close your eyes and look and and conjure back to maybe when you were that young, didn't you kind of feel like you felt like wow look at this world around me, what is my relationship to it? Didn't you feel as a kid? Kids always ask why, why daddy, why mommy. And, either the, and most of the time, the parents say, enough with your questions. Do your homework. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. I certainly we, we dismiss them. We say, oh, we you, that, that's, I'm, you're going to have to stop saying those things. You know, you're going to, you, you can't tell, don't tell people you, don't say that to, in public. Yeah. You know, we quiet pe our, the kids down, but you're right. Uh, when I was, you know, I remember 10 years old looking around going, wow. Yeah. Is, is this, is this everything? And we die? Yeah. Yeah. And looking up at the sky, I remember looking at the sky and thinking, well, where does the blue end? You know, these great kind of <laughs> questions. And yeah. the thing is, is that 
Then we get caught up in this world and all of that gets forgotten, our yeah. true essence. Yeah. And, and that's what happens. And I don't know. I don't know. I think that I'm, I'm hoping that the world does begin to wake up a little bit, but it's a slow transition. I had one of my students who was a second grade teacher in the public schools in New York. And I, I, I taught a little thing called the awareness exercise. And she started doing it with her students and administration started, started telling her to stop doing that. And, uh, Oh, really? I'm teaching. Mm. Oh yeah. yeah. So, um, so let's keep going. What do we, uh, what else do we have on this uh, page 22? Well, if you look at, if you, if you go on now to the fact of knowing being awareness or awareness is closer than our breathing, our innermost thoughts, our most cherished feelings. In fact, it is not close to us. It is what we essentially are. And this is the part that really hits because it answers the question. It is overlooked precisely because it is so intimate and familiar, not because it is remote, unknown, or inaccessible, because we've overlooked it. And, um, and the fact is, is that that's who we are. And we're constantly, as I said before, being bombarded. Um, you know, there's another ancient story about where uh, the gods wanted to hit, hide the most valuable treasure in the world. And they figured the best way to put it is inside of somebody. That's the last place they're going to look. Um, there it is. Yeah, it's there. Yeah. There yeah. it is. Yeah. You and know, it's in that statement, too, uh, in that paragraph where where Rupert says the fact of knowing, being aware or awareness itself is closer to us than our breathing. And it's interesting that um, a lot of people and my myself included, I've done this, start a meditation by being aware, uh, take a big, deep breath being aware of the breath, and we don't point out awareness. <laughs> we just point out the breath. Yeah. You know, so right. we, we give attention to the object instead of the, the, instead of the true self-awareness experience. Yes. It's right. And it says, right, what about that which is aware of the breath? Yes. There it is, because that points out the the thing that's closer to us than our breath. Yes. Well, that's the whole thing, and and you know you cannot be that which you observe. That's the, that's where the difficulty arises. So yes, you can become aware of the breath, but that's not who we are. And so, how do you describe that which you cannot? That which you can't. Once you observe it, how could you be it? So you're not the breath. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. So what else uh, d did you have uh, on this page before we turn it? Well, I also I also I also took in this case, I love that line where it says awareness is not overlooked because it is known because it is so well known. Familiarity in this case may not breed contempt, but it certainly accounts for neglect. So that's the whole thing, because that's our true nature of who we are. It's so, it's so incredible that Rupert writes that, that um, it's just always there. It's kind of like saying, uh, the fish are thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, They're starved for what's really there. Yeah. And it's... Uh, yeah, it's funny on one level, but on the other level, it's it's it's, uh, it's really our dilemma. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, I I, I love uh, most of us know that this this book was written. Uh, you know, it post it was in the middle of COVID, and uh, when I just did a, a filming of Rupert at Garrison a few months ago, the students that are in uh, that are under Rupert's teaching that have been to many retreats are saying he's different. He's, he's communicating just as you said a few minutes ago, Harley, he's, he's like an Emerson uh, channel of our time. And this content that we're reading right now, this is the most, 
recent direct uh, communication, uh, that transmission that's, that's coming through, that's sitting on a page that we're reading right now. Yes, yes, yes. And what comes to mind with Emerson is that he wrote about, and, and I mean, a lot, of, a lot of what was written there, it's almost like Socrates were lectures or whatever. Yeah. And he talks about the transparent eyeball. I love that. I don't know. I love that terminology because it essentially says that it's just transparent. There's nothing that clouds it. It's clear. It's clean. And um, when one does that and one trusts in, in just connecting to that awareness within, there's no fear. It just flows through. Even right now, as I speak to all of you, I feel incredibly at peace because I'm not thinking about what I'm saying. I'm just letting it flow through me. Yeah. And that's, and that's key. Yeah. That's key to this. Okay. So, and uh, if anyone has any comments, just raise, uh, put the raise hand feature. We're going to uh, go to uh, as late as, as 15 minutes over. Yeah. I if just realized any, if yeah. there's any questions. Right, right. See, see what I mean. We're only uh, two pages in, and we're we're already a halfway through. Looks uh, like yeah. it looks like William has a yeah. question or yeah. a comment. Hey, William, it's good to see you. Can you please unmute your mic? Thank you, Bill. It's good to see you too, and nice to meet you. Is it Harvey? Harley. 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 Yeah. Very nice to meet you, sir. Yes. I just thought we'd get back to the text and um, without personalizing the, the teaching um, into teachers and schools of thought, I thought we'd return to the essence of that knowledge which is completely universal and there is no bodily these bodies might not even exist they might just be waveforms collapsed into you know appearances totally but i just really want to realize that this is totally in personal and yet can manifest in forms of love affection and so on like that but really um the essence is beyond any particular form yes uh i i, I could i could um I, I i believe william that you're dead on with that spot on as the brits would mm -hmm. say Yep. Because what I, the way that I've, and I've been studying this now for uh, 25 years, I've been meditating for over 40 years. And the way that I see people now is I don't see, what we see physically is just a manifestation of what's taking place in the subtle realm. I see them all as fields of energy. Um, if you want to read more about this, I would, I would recommend looking at chapter four of the Bhagavad Gita that talks about energy. I love that chapter. Yes. And... I'm a 50-year student of the Gita. So you know, you've got, you've got the gunas and you've got uh, the three factors of Rajas, Thomas, and Satwa. And I promised Bill I wasn't going to start using Sanskrit. So, yeah. um, but they I'm are a Sanskrit freak myself, but I don't <laughs> use it anymore. Right, right. <laughs> but that being said, because I just don't want to turn people off and you don't need it. Right. English, English is a wonderful language. Um, yes, all is. languages do come from Sanskrit, though, that the etymology oh, yes. and 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 basically you just see people, you know, people that are sattvaka are people that are just illuminate consciousness. Rajas is the movement of consciousness. So there are people that that might get you nervous when you see them. And then there are people that just a tamas, which is where 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 energy dissolves and you just walk in and you just they make you feel exhausted. So that's the way, and we're all like that, and we're all components of those things, constantly changing energy forces. Thank you, William, for that. We probably should get back to the text, though. Good to see you, William, and thank yeah. you for that, uh, to get us back on the, uh, the text. Right, right. Thank, thank you, Bill. All right. So, so to bring it back here, um, we're talking about the tantric tradition. I, I, was, I am not familiar at all with 
uh, Kashmir Shaivism. I think I'm Shaivism, saying that. yeah, Kashmir Shaivism. Mm -hmm. Right, but Rupert it goes refer back. To, refers to this all the time. Yeah, but it goes back to the last place one would look, the most hidden. It goes back to that story, which I just thought was um, was was great. But the next paragraph is really really powerful. What, what page are we on? I'm sorry, I'm already on page 23. Okay, we're on page 23. The the third pair. What paragraph? Um, the third paragraph. Paragraph. Okay. Good. You know, but I, I know we have to keep moving, right, Bill? Because yep. we're not even halfway done. Um, yep. And and but but this is really important. That the fact is that he said that it says here that um, when I suggest that we overlook the presence of awareness in the same way that we overlook the space in the room. I am clear that we are one thing and awareness another. That is not intended. We are awareness. We are awareness. And once we, once we become aware of that, that to me is the ultimate way of living. Because in that capacity, we then become the witness of everything. We are just the witness. We're like a... Uh, um, and I believe that Rupert has, has alluded to this before, so I don't want to be repetitive, but we're like the screen that a movie is projected on. And no matter what happens on that screen, whether it's extremely violent, painful, romantic, whatever, the screen is exactly the same. The screen doesn't change. Um, it just is still. Yeah. I like, um, I like, when I read, like in paragraph four, uh, it is we awareness yes. who, who directing the light of our attention towards the objective content of experience, overlook ourself, the subject of experience. So I, I really like the idea that's introduced right there, that the person isn't doing it. I, I like that clarity to, you know, because, the you know, Bill's not doing anything. <laughs> We're not doing anything. We do nothing at all. Yeah. Thus says the wise yeah. person, knowingly steadfast in witnessing. Yeah. So that gives freedom. That gives release and freedom. Everyone here, whatever your name is, you're not making the thing happen yeah <laughs> so you know i i really like i mean that's just so clear what he says in that one one sentence yes we might believe that we're doing but it's a misperception and the doing is the way that we look at things that we think we can fix things we can change things we don't like the way things are and what is that what is that that is just not being present well, it's the it's the old program. It's the program uh, of uh, of of being identified. The I, I is identified as the body suit and the conditioned self and all the things that went with it. Yeah. And 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 it's a divesture, uh, a, a dissolving of that. And and even you know we don't get on the path we don't choose to get on this path it's it happens it happens it happens but yet I mean I I just remember when my daughter was born uh, three months into it you know she when when we're first born into this human embodiment we're not even aware of that you know our our this body suit that we're in and she would I would just put her she I would just put her out my wife and I would put her out in the back of our porch and she would just look up at the star at the sky and everything else around her and just be witnessing just love witnessing everything that goes around I, I would venture to say with the exception maybe of this group how many people can sit still for three minutes I, I think we'd have a lot less we'd have a lot more peace in this world if someone could be capable of doing that without being bored where yeah. does boredom come in yeah hard well, keep going yes by all means and there you have it, because the answer to that will just go back to ADD, awareness deficit disorder. Yes. That's the answer. There I it just is. jumped ahead. We all have ADD. We do. Yeah. We, we have all of those. Until things. we don't. Yeah. And yeah. it's the cause of all psychological suffering of the individual and the conflicts between individuals, communities, and nations. And Rupert does not mince words here. 
He doesn't say it's the cause of psychological suffering of the individual or some. He says all, everything. I don't think he can be any more explicit. Right, right, yeah. There is nothing else. That's the root of evil, if you want to call it that. Yeah, yeah. And then the very last paragraph on page 23, the fact of knowing, being aware, or awareness itself is not something that some people have in greater measure than others. He would include himself here. Yeah. This is what I love about Rupert. He doesn't make himself special, nor is it more readily accessible to some people than to others. None has privileged access to it. It is available to all people at all times and under all circumstances, simply by, by virtue of the fact that everybody is aware, irrespective of what they may be aware of in any moment of experience. Well, that's exactly right. We are no more aware than, you know, you talk about Emerson, you talk about Rupert, or even ideas about myself. It's all the same awareness. How could it be any different within each individual? It just gets clouded over. It's like the analogy, and, and uh, you know, I, I like doing these, these analogies because it makes it simple. You have three light bulbs with the same wattage, yet some are just dustier than others, so they all look different. All you have to do is remove that dust, <laughs> and it's the same. That's a good one. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, it is. It is. Yeah. It's not, I mean, it is so freeing, Bill that we don't have to acquire anything. We just got to clear that dust, that muck from that. Yeah. It's and, not uh, easy. I, I just want to mention that Jenny has been uh, engaged on the chat. And thank you, Jenny, for that back story uh, that you uh, offered on the, the, uh, the, phil phil the philosophical society and, the, and the, that thing with Francis Rolls and stuff. We're not going to get into that, but I appreciate you adding that and um oh that is interesting yeah okay right I, yeah. i'm not one for uh for looking at the chats when i'm yeah. doing this I, I try to cover uh, you know little parts right. here and there so we keep keep every, right. no, everybody I, 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 I appreciate it yeah. yeah i mean the history of it is, is quite fascinating but i think it yeah. it detracts from what's here and to me all of that is fascinating but it's just stuff yeah just and stuff <laughs> so let's go to page 24. Yes. So, right. We turn into the presence of awareness. Yeah. So. Oh, wait, wait, back up. Uh, at the top of the page, I, this, this idea that's introduced, it can be easily recognized as soon as we soften the focus of our attention from its objective content and come back to ourself. I, this is a really important, That's important. thing because it, it, this is the portal to, uh, to, to being, to, 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 or to acknowledging the essence of I am or the essence of awareness. This is the, this is the portal experience where one softens, you know, he, he's giving a, uh, he's giving a process or a, 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 an activity where awareness um, self-awares itself. Yes. It's almost like self-corrects. Right, right. And, and, but, but here's the thing is that it just, it, it is, it softens it. And I like that because the thing is, is that on some level, um, we need to be aware of that so that we don't get lost in, in just the sensory world again. And, uh, uh, and there are ways to do that. You know, when we find ourselves getting caught up in our heads, uh, David Foster Wallace put it very appropriately, who, who, I, um, uh, who was professor of Pomona, wrote some great books called Infinite Jest. He said that, it's that we're all rulers of our skull-sized kingdoms. So we don't want to get lost in our heads. Right. When we feel yeah. that happening, we need to just stop and pause and uh and 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 just become aware of of, of what we're of our true nature because yeah. it's easy to forget 
It's easy yep. to forget. A powerful way to do that, a technique that I have is, is which I had yet to complete a whole day of doing myself, because um, then I think I'd be fully realized if that were to happen or any of us, is to pause between activities. So you don't bring one activity into the other. Because once we do that, we're gone. We're gone. <laughs> <laughs> let's go forget bill let's, i forget all the time yeah, yeah. I, I, you know I, well, it's it, not a but, false humility. yeah w w this is i mean the thing is is that and rupert uh rupert speaks about this that th this when when awareness is becomes a, a, a more of a default then it's a default it it's just more it's it's more of your default and and the conditioned self, the identification of the bodysuit is a less default. Right. Yeah. Right. So you need to just be aware. And um, I mean, one of the things that, and I probably sh it probably should be a Rupert question, but one of the things I do find challenging is is without certain techniques that I have, how does one remember all the time? Um, because I do try to pause between activities, I try to met. I try to spend an. Uh, uh, I try to spend an hour a day in meditation to remember. Um, I, I I think. I mean, this is just my answer. Mm -hmm. Don't try to do anything. Just let everything yeah, happen. Just let everything go. Because right. Harley's not in charge. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's a. That's a. That's a. Uh, uh, that's a something that's trying to step up and manage. You, you got it. So true. Yeah. Yeah. So true. These All are right. Let's keep going. We're on page 24. What were you going to point to here? So I was, I was, I was going to point that, um, well, just how attention is, a, it's a two way street. You see, the thing about it is you're right. Just remember that you can travel in one direction and you can travel it in the opposite direction. Um, and it's just it's just going back and forth. So so in other words, if if I if one were to find themselves overwhelmed with the content of experience, they could just peel those layers back. Well, it's not this. It's not this. It's not that. Till you go back to your own true essence. Well, and, in this in this uh, observation, where where he was recalling the experience at the concert. Uh, it began his investigation. It began right. his his awakening, realization, and then, and this was this was realization doing this. This wasn't Rupert doing it. It was happening, so that he could be our Emerson. Yes, <laughs> yes, that's exact. That's exactly right. And Emerson, I mean, if you look at pictures of him photographs of him i met actually a descendant of him and she just had the most brilliant blue eyes that just were just so captured and just because just so present there wasn't anything that got in the way or an intermediary and that yeah. comes from the essence truly of remembering oneself yeah. Bill, I just got to ask you for time's sake because we only got about twelve minutes till the top of the hour. Well, we're we going to go to we're going to go to one fifteen. We're going to go a little bit longer to one fifteen. But did you want to leave time for questions and answers? Yeah, and well, I'm. Uh, questions are open right now. Anyone wants to raise their hand? They okay, can, they can raise their hand, and and we'll we'll finish on time. Yeah, I'd rather we're do gonna, that than check the chat, so we can yeah. keep on. Yeah, moving. we're we're good if we keep going. What else okay. would you like to to look at on this? All right. Well, I'd like to just the next paragraph, we'll just keep moving. Um, this whole world of likes and dislikes that we have is just, um, it just shows how quick, how easy it is to, to get captured in all of that. Um, you know, Shakespeare in Hamlet says that nothing is good or bad thinking about it makes it so. Once we decide that we don't like something, we get dismissive of it. You know, I always thought when I was growing up that I was bad in Spanish because I just didn't like it. <laughs> so, I mean, where did that come from, right? Where do these likes and dislikes come from? Um, it might come from the way that I was raised where somebody, you know, where I said, oh, do you like this food? Do you like that food? You know, Dr. Seuss, green eggs and yeah. ham. Yeah. There you have it. So, so. Uh, <clears throat> let's go back to what Rupert is uh, sharing with us on about uh the, the fourth or fifth paragraph when he says, whenever I notice this, he says on, 
other occasions, the dissatisfaction was fully felt in mm -hmm. the form of suffering. Yeah. Whenever I noticed this, I would make a conscious effort to return to the presence of awareness in the background of experience, for I had already noticed that being devoid of all objective qualities, it was the place of peace or refuge in myself. Right. And right. I, I, I want to look at what Jenny said uh, on the chat, because she says, no effort is needed. When, and this was referring to what you were saying. I don't know how I, you know, I, I don't know how to do that. I don't, you know, I, how, to, how to stay present in awareness. And Jenny says, no effort is needed when understanding of our true nature dawns in a glimpse, it remembers itself. Techniques get in the way as they reinforce the doer, but they can be useful at an early stage. And, and I think Rupert is actually referring here to an early stage. So for some of us, when, when, you, when you pause, as you mentioned that you do, I, I think that's occurring. And the body mind wants to get in the way and say, oh, remember, you're supposed to do this. It's, yeah, trying, it's a, trying to insert itself back into the experience. Right, right. As a doer, as a doer. Yeah, yeah. But if we're witness only, what we don't realize um, is that uh, the mind is so quick. The, the ancient Upanishads talk about it, that we, that we oftentimes forget that that there's the awareness, we, we, we go through life from desire to action, but there's a moment in, in between that has a rest. It's, 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 you know, those of you who've, who've studied music, you can see that you have those, that's where, that's where the real witness, that's where the real experience takes place. Yeah. And we don't have to remember a technique, but I think, I believe it's important to know when one activity ends and another begins, like, you know, when, when, when somebody serves you a plate of food, you don't just dive in, right? Mm -hmm. And just start shoveling away. You stop for a second and just become aware of it. And then you really taste the food rather than filling your gullet. That's one example that I can think of. Yeah, yeah. And that's a great way to live life. Yes, yes. R Rosalind Rourke uh, writes on the chat, if we are trying to get somewhere, it is a big clue to what we think we are, right? So if we're trying to accomplish something, if we're trying, if, if there's a doer, it's an efforting of the, of the bodysuit that's trying to, it, it wants to wake up. <laughs> yeah. You it's know, it, it, it's, 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 uh, it's trying to hijack the experience of presence. Well, the mind wants to rule. Let's face it. The mind wants to be in charge, whatever that is, yeah. right? Yeah. But, but what we've discovered, certainly what I've discovered, is that the mind makes a horrible master, but it's a wonderful servant. So it's not yeah. like you have to completely obliterate the mind, but you, it's like training an errant, you know, crazy puppy that my daughter has right now. Um, otherwise, it becomes a monster. Who wants, yeah. the, you know, who wants the mind to rule? Who wants the body of the world rule? Because it's not you. It's not you. Um, I mean, the body is, is really just, it really just comes down to, if we could just remember the bot, I am not this body, it's an instrument for my use. That would be a game changer. It's just a vehicle. It's like a car. Yeah, I don't think this remembering is, is necessary, but okay. it's, it's another subject uh, yeah. to talk about. Let's, let's move to this. Uh, I love this storybook that he talks about. At the bottom of page 24, this new habit was very simple. As a child, I was brought up with P.D. Eastman's book, Are You My Mother? I, I think that's so cool what is described here. And, uh, you know, in the baby bird continues on its journey, talks about these different animals that are uh, that is looking for its mother. And it's everything that it encounters, a dog, a cow, a car a boat, aeroplane, the same question. Finally, the bird is returned to its nest. I'm at the top of page 20 
uh, uh, 25. It returns to its nest and reunites with its mother. The practice of stepping back from the content of experience and resting in and as the presence of awareness proceeds in a similar way, we simply ask every experience that we encounter, are you myself? Yes. Yes. And that's how we make our, we find our, our, our way home. And I think, I believe that oftentimes that's our journey in life is this search, whether we know it or not, everybody's on that search until at the end, you come home. Yeah. You come and we home. realize we never left. Right. We never left. Thank you, Bill. We never left. That's the misnomer. It's yeah. always there. Yeah. But yet we go on these journeys searching for external satisfaction. And at the end of the day, it might satisfy in a transitory way. But considering this is a course on happiness, um, I'll tell you one thing that's really fascinating, and, and, I, and I encourage all of you to do it. Look up, the, look up the, the dictionary definition of happiness. I even did it in the Oxford Dictionary, which I consider to be the most prestigious, considering we're dealing with the Brits. And they just look at it as something transitory that's kind of hit or miss. Yeah. So yeah. We're, we're very confused by that term. And so we look for happiness in these external objects, but it's always there. Yeah, it's always, it's always what's looking. It's always what's searching. <laughs> Is it, yeah, we just we just need to turn around and be. Uh, yeah. If we look, if we go on to this next paragraph, uh, uh, it's a little bit uh, after. Are you myself? It, Rupert says we are no more our thoughts, images, feelings, and sensations than we are a mountain, a tree, or a movie. This simple question invites, and here's another here's another uh, idea being introduced. This invites a softening of the focus of our attention from its objective content and facilitates the recognition of our self as the witnessing or knowing presence of awareness. Yeah. Right. It's that He's softening, soft. relaxing element that's actually being, it's being given right now as a reminder from awareness to awareness, right now, in this, right now. <laughs> this is for each one of us. It's given to us from consciousness, from the essence of I am to itself. Yes, yes. And, you know, I ask myself, why is it that we're not aware of this? I think it's a way of whatever happened, it's a way of keeping, it's like, it's like God is watching a movie about us and he must be amused by our search. And, and how we, <laughs> we go round and round and round and don't, the circumference and don't even go within, but that's our way home. And I believe yeah. that that's what is wanted of us. And that's yeah. wisdom. Yeah, but there's no he and it's, there's no Appreciate God it. because it's the essence of, of awareness <laughs> that's doing no. all the, that, no. that, is, that is the is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But sometimes I wonder if we're somebody's dream. But that's a whole other discussion. Yeah, that's another discussion. <laughs> right. Let's keep going. Um, okay. uh, what else do you see on the page uh, 25 before we... So, so, I'm, so, And for all of you that came for one hour, we're going to go to 115 and, and at maximum if you want to stay with us. Right. So that first, par that first paragraph, if we go down below, below to, I'm sorry, to, the, to where there's the break, most people are so accustomed to paying exclusive attention to content, that this process of, ste of stepping back and resting as the presence of awareness may seem to be begin with involve some effort or patience or practice. And you ask the question, who am I really? What is this that knows or is aware of, of my experience? It just goes back to that. It, it comes down to those two questions. What am I versus what is this world around me? And to, to go on, to go down to the, the second to last paragraph as, a, as an alternative to this line of questioning, we may also reason that no thing that appears or disappears in our experience could be essential to us. Only the fact of being aware remains constantly present. And therefore, only the fact of being aware qualifies as our essential self. And the pull of objective experience may be so strong 
that that's what captures us. So here's what I, here's the way just to encapsulate because of time's sake. What I see about this is that we have a choice. We can either, um, I've, I've uh, scuba dived, so I can see this as a great analogy, but we have a choice. We can either ride the waves, consider the ocean and all of its up and downs, right? I see that as getting nauseous, terribly nauseous, or we can just dive deep where there could be hurricanes taking place at the surface, but we just have that deep stillness no matter what's happening externally as a result of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Just drop down into the ocean and hang just, out right there. Just, just go deep, exactly, exactly. Uh, he says, as an alternative to this line of questioning, so what I call the sacred question, what he calls the sacred question, that is the essence of self-inquiry. We may also reason that nothing that appears and disappears in our experience could be essential to us. So anything that's time and space based is not essential no. to the awareness of it. It's just a passing show. It's just a, yeah, it's a passing cloud. It's a movement. It's an activity. Right. That's being, that, 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 that rises or, or, or in, it rises in the awareness of it. Yes. Yes. And that's, and that's the whole thing. And so even whatever aches we have in our bodies, um, you know, as we age or whatever, whatever our, those things are transitory. If we can witness them and realize that we're not it, it's just a way, it's just a way of, 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 of experiencing even pain without even thinking this is bad. It's just the experience itself. Yeah. Yeah. Bit there was somebody that wrote on the board, Harley, that uh, I, I love my pain, Don. I didn't I even know work. that was there. There you yeah. go. I love my pain. My pain is my friend. It only comes to me when I have chosen unwisely, <laughs> forgotten who or what I am, and invites me to choose again, choose love, choose joy, choose peace, choose happiness, choose. I, I want to expand on that a little bit, Don. It brings you to the awareness of all of those things so that it brings you back to what can't be touched by pain. That's, that's exact. That's exactly right. Yeah. And that's just part. And it's just, it's just part of the, uh, it's just part of the experience. And, uh, uh, I mean, I remember one time when I had to have my, uh, I, I had to have a tooth extracted, a back molar because I needed to have an implant and you can spread this kind of fine energy around you without talking about it. And the, the dentist sent to me, said, I'm able to work so efficiently because I sense you were just so calm, so still about these things. And I just, I enjoyed it. I mean, even the pain, I was like, oh, I'm witnessing this. And yes. It's fascinating to see the technology of what's being yeah. done. It's this fear factor that yeah. we have. It's the identification. Well, it, that gets it, brings, it brings experience of pain to a different uh, experience. Yeah. When, when, when you become the witness of the pain, it no longer has this, the, this power uh, that's, that is identified as something uh, terrible and, and bad and wrong. Right. It's, it can be more of a signal. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and you, just, you just learn to live with it. Yeah. And I believe, I'm noticing in, in society today, I have so many... Uh, I know so many people that have this, uh, I guess they call it tinnitus or something where there's a ringing going on yeah. in, in the head. And uh, I mean, I even have a nephew who, who is afflicted with that and he, he identifies with it. And as a result, it's just yeah. so unhappy. Yeah. And so I've, I've um, encouraged him to go this route and he's finding that once he's able to separate from it, it goes, it, it's still there, but he just doesn't identify with it. Yeah. Yeah, Life's exactly. Too short. Yeah. So let's go to the top, the, the first, the second paragraph uh, that says in time uh, on page 26, yes. in, in time, Rupert says it becomes so natural to understand and feel ourself as presence of awareness that it no longer needs to be maintained by effort 
or practice, nor does it need to be initiated by a question or a line of reasoning. See, that's, this, yes, this go is ahead. It. Yeah, and that's the part that I'm very, very, uh, um, this, is, this is where it's so wonderful that we have this book, we have Rupert as part of this whole thing, because he, if he, if he, he, he came in, he came up through the same tradition that I did that, um, you know, have these kind of techniques and he's just let all of them go on some level. I mean, correct well, right. this is the, this is yeah. the end game. He just, what I just said, uh, read is, is what I was saying a few minutes ago that it, it there, there occurs a new default, a new, a new default happens and uh, I really feel the, the, the strength. I really feel the, how reasonable this idea is that's stated because it has become a gradual understanding for myself. So yeah. I'm my own witness. Right. And you know, Bill, it just occurred to me the way you said that. I think I, it's funny, actually. And this is one of the great benefits of, of my being forced to be so present as a speaker, being part of this whole thing. But I just realized that it really, it's not acquiring any kind of like techniques or anything. It's just that Rupert has developed and we all have that capacity and those to just let go. It's all about just letting go. And once we do that, we're in it. It's not like, oh, I've got to remember that I'm the self because when we do that, you're gone because that's just a concept. That's exactly right. Yeah. There's no doership. Yeah. So um, there's a uh, second to the last, third to the last paragraph on page 26. Rupert said, Some, somebody once asked the Indian sage Atmananda Krishna Menon how one knows when one is established in one's true nature. And he replied, when thoughts, feelings, sensations and perceptions can no longer take you away from yourself. Yes. There it is. That's the answer. You remain the witness. It, it, I, I am, well, this could be a technique, but if you could just remember, I am witness only. I mean, but that's just a technique. You just have to live it. Yeah, the techniques fall away. That's that's what's being said here. The techniques fall away. They're they're a beginning. They're like that, you know, that idea that you use a toothpick and you get the thing out of your teeth and you throw them both away. You this is the same idea. This is the same idea. Yeah. So it's kind of a question, but it's it, it, it's the answer within the question is that if I find myself getting caught up in the thoughts, feelings, and sensations, percep perceptions, which will invariably happen, um, and I would say, I would assume this happens with Rupert, um, you just let go of those things and you become aware that you're not those things, and that's awareness. Or does that, well, does that he, he, gave a two, uh, he gave several descriptions. He relaxes and, and, and softens the focus, and, and it's not really him, mm -hmm. right? It, no. it, it's it's awareness is 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 offers itself a space of relaxing so it's the non-doer so you're calling it letting go and and it's it's that's a uh, that's a a term of surrender of of relaxing for me it's it's almost like you're, you the relaxing seems to be less efforting than letting go so, and, and words matter uh, a little bit because it gives the mind a tool that it thinks it needs to use and it stays in this subtle engagement. It does. Yeah. It does. And then eventually, it, 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 and this is, this is where it gets tricky, the mind says, which is, very, very, which is affiliated with the ego, oh, I'm remembering this technique, I'm doing this or that. And then all of a sudden, before you know it, the mind is ruling again. Yeah. <laughs> it's being the master. You got to get it and, and uh, you're gone. Well, let's read the last paragraph. Yes. As the content of our experience gradually loses its capacity to take us away from ourself, 
it is no longer necessary to turn away from it. We remain knowingly the presence of awareness, both in formal periods of meditation, both in formal periods of meditation, when we withdraw our attention from the content of experience and during everyday life in the midst of experience, the dilemma of attention is resolved. The conflict between awareness and experience diminishes. Experience becomes increasingly transparent to the presence of awareness and we find ourselves at home everywhere. There you and, go. And that's that great quote that you highlighted from Herman Hess. Yes. And, and I feel, uh, I really feel, I mean, you sort of, uh, uh, Im you implied that Rupert has, uh, or, or may have trouble staying in awareness too. I, I don't think he does. And if he, he has mentioned that if he does, it's not there very long. Right, and, right. And, and I think that most of us here that have been have this understanding, even for a little bit, could say, yes, I have noticed that I'm less and less engaged in the experiences that used to run the show, in the experiences that, um, that I had before. I, 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 I think all of us could say that. Yeah, it just becomes less and less. And, and, and I mean, honestly, I've never met Rupert. I know you, you have, Bill. But just, I mean, when, when he's up in front like that, there's, there's, there's no forgetting. And um, uh, that's, that's really, I believe, where it takes place. And that's something that even um, I've been able to experience in this last hour and 15 minutes. And so that's grace. Um, nice. And that's a great way to that's a great way to see that, and we all have access. and And I find that when I see him on the screen, when we're on the screen, we have these discussions. This is this is where we do. This is the work that's being done, so that when we get off of Zoom, this continues throughout the day, and we are truly happy. Yeah, we are the happiness that we seek. And so it is. And thank you, Rosalind, for your uh, mention on the chat. Rupert has said he, if he forgets, he stays silent until he remembers. Mm. Yeah. And if he does stay silent, then it all comes. That's great. Yeah. I think we're out of time. I think we're so at the fun. end of our time. Thank you all for being here and also staying late. So many. Thank you for being here. Uh, Harley, thanks for your uh, Thank you. being a co-host today. It was brilliant. It was a I, pleasure. We Thank all you enjoyed much. it. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you all. Good uh, to look, see you all. Look, look Thank forward you. to seeing you all. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Yeah, you oh, wait. Next week we have, um, let me see who's our, uh, we have Jenny Sheehan next week. You're going to love her. Hi, Jenny, if you're here. I haven't uh, looked on the gallery, but it's good to see all of you. And thank you for being here. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks Bye. everybody.